Hello and welcome to the garden, but not your usual view of it because I'm just outside the kitchen garden where we have a couple of gnarly old apple trees and I've just come to take a quick look at them. I noticed that the first apples are starting to fall and uh, that's kind of to be expected at this time of year, although I think this hot dry weather will not be helping it and I mean we're not we're just not going to get any rain here in the south anytime soon and it may be that our fruit here suffers somewhat of course I don't water this area at all I never water these trees um, no matter how dry it gets but this is a fairly early apple so it won't be too long before these are good to eat and I wouldn't be surprised if this year that is say several weeks earlier than usual. So this is a Kerry Pippin. It, it's not one of the earliest but it's still a pretty early apple ready before I think almost everything else we have here um, is, is anywhere near ready. Uh, I think we've got we've got Beauty of Bath which is uh, one of the proper earlies but those sorts of apple they tend to be a little bit on the tart side and not so well flavored it, it's only natural that the fruit haven't been developing for as long as the later season sorts the later season apples they tend to have better balance of sugars and uh, acidity and they're much more highly aromatic this little fella though i think for its season is a very fine eating apple like other early apples its season is short they don't keep really off the tree but you get a few weeks of use of the Kerry Pippin and during that time it is delightful I mean many of the many of the fruits on this tree will be a bit scarred and a bit rough looking but it is nonetheless a very tasty apple and I'm looking forward to this one fairly soon but I've got another apple in the garden that is potentially much earlier and much more interesting. Let's go and take a look. So what I've got here is an apple tree being trained more or less as a step over. Step overs are normally lower to the ground. I don't need it to be particularly low here. So I've got the two main limbs uh, at a reasonable height. What I need to do here is put some supports in and I'll probably use a length of rebar for that and at that point I can then tie these uh, main limbs in nicely. Of course when you've got this sort of situation where you're laying branches down you will undoubtedly get some vertical shoots and they will start to take over and in fact I've got quite a bit of aphid on these. No matter those aphid are soon going to go because these shoots have all pretty much terminated. They they are not growing anymore so I think I can do the summer pruning of this I mean it's only a tiny little job it's ants everywhere of course because of the aphids get off um, I can summer prune this now which happily will remove those aphids as well but there were two apples on this and I've been watching them and <laughs> hoping they would hang in there and yesterday I saw one was on the ground and, and, I've, and I've just given the other a gentle lift and sure enough that one has come off as well. So I don't know what sort of state they're in. I'm going to have a little taste though. So here is one of the apples and it's a very pretty little thing. Uh, almost yellow, yellow green on the shaded side and then this beautiful crimson flushing reasonably well formed not a huge apple but that's that's fine looks very nice and the reason that this might possibly be edible at this point in the season is because this is not an English apple so my wife is from Finland and some years ago actually we brought this apple over and it was in a different position outside of what is our current kitchen garden and then I had to move it so it was being grown in a different way in a different place and it had been there a couple of years and was probably due to give us its first crop and then 
I had to decapitate it, lift it and start again here. So the poor thing has had a bit of a hard start to its life, but it is growing away quite happily now and produced for us just these two. Well, actually there were three, but I removed the center one to give these other two a good chance to get going. So Finnish apples are actually very pleasant, but they are quite different from our English apples. And for obvious reasons, our, our stock effectively traveled north through Europe. We got a lot of the apples from France. I mean, I'm talking hundreds of years ago, of course. And, but they all came, generally speaking, from, from the south upwards. And the Finnish apples, they come from different stock, generally speaking, and they've come from the east, colder parts of the world. For obvious reasons, Finland can be a little bit of a tricky place to grow stuff. So most of the apples are grown in the south, and I think the largest portion of them on the Orland Islands, but, but lots of Finnish gardens are filled with apple trees and they produce lots of lovely apples. The growing season, though, is necessarily shorter and during the summer, they, they have wonderful summers, long days, lots of sunlight, but it is a shorter growing season. So one would not normally take a plant that's adapted to those conditions, harsh winters and a short, albeit quite lovely summer, and expect it to be entirely happy here. And, and it probably, it probably isn't. It probably would prefer more cold in the winter. Cold is often very important for getting good bud break in the spring. And it probably doesn't like how our season goes. It, it, the, it's adapted to different conditions. Nonetheless, I thought just for fun, it would be worth bringing it in and having a go. So this is the so-called cinnamon apple. And to be honest, I have no idea what its natural fruiting season might be in this country. So I don't know. This could be completely unripe and foul, or there's just a chance that this might be tasty. And I'm gonna have a little go. Well, it doesn't feel hard. Hmm. That's certainly not underripe. Um, I think lack of water has possibly been detrimental to the texture. It is a little bit, it's a little bit flowery. Well, I do like a crisp, juicy apple. But actually, it's very nice. It is remarkably sweet, especially for this time of the, the year. So th this is a ridiculously early apple here, but yeah, and there's a very interesting flavor. So I, 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 I presume it's supposed to have a little spice to it being called the cinnamon apple. Hmm. There is definitely a little something to that flavor that I really rather like. That's a nice little apple, that. And I'm very excited to get to taste this. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if we're, we're not, we're not often in Finland during the, during the right time for, for apples. And of course, we haven't been to Finland for a couple of years, thanks to COVID. But yeah, this is a really great little fella. Hmm. It's actually quite delicious. I am so pleased to finally get some fruit off of our tree here. And I will, <coughs> I will know for future seasons to be on the lookout for it pretty early in August. Now I know the weather has been a bit extreme this summer, 
but nonetheless, probably in a normal season, I would think by mid-August, this one will be cropping. So I now know to keep a closer eye on that. But anyway, that's a good start. Right, I'm gonna prune this. I might as well show you exactly what I'm doing there as well. So I've got my main branch running along the bottom and as with all cordons, espaliers, the pruning is pretty simple during the summer. If it's coming off of the main branch, as this is, you go down, identify the basal cluster, the tightly packed group of leaves at the bottom, and look for three leaves above the basal cluster and prune there. If, it, if you find something growing off of one of these, then, so it's not coming off the main branch, but, but off of a lateral, then you cut that back even tighter, just one leaf. But most of my growth this year, because it's, it's only been in this position for one season, it's gonna be pretty, pretty much coming off the main branch. I think I might have some, some others from the center. I'll look at those in a minute, but here's another one. Three leaves, one, two, three, and basal cluster, three leaves, and away. This bit here I will probably lay down when I've got when I've got the uh, support in place. Right, so this is not coming off of a main branch so that is just that's coming back to just one leaf past the the basal cluster here. Similarly with this one And again here, this is, this is last year's growth. These are coming off the side, so uh, cut that back quite hard. And also the same over here. Now I've got a bit of woolly aphid on here, and I'm gonna have to be careful with that. It's not a huge problem, but they do cause a bit of damage. And uh, I don't like to see that. I'm gonna have to spray these with something, I think, because I've been jetting them off from time to time and it isn't, it isn't sufficient. So again, these are, these are coming off the side and actually I'm going to cut that one back there. Pretty short. And there. And these, these shortcuts here, what we're trying to do is encourage the development of fruit buds in this area. And I want these to become the spur systems. You can just rub these woolly aphid off there. It's not nice, but it's better than leaving them on there. Yuck. And there's the basal cluster, one, two, three. This is coming off of another branch, so that's the basal cluster, just one leaf and away. And that's a fairly useful rule to follow. Here we actually have one of the exceptions to the rule. Ordinarily you would cut this back where there's a bud there or to there, but this is terminated in what is probably a flower bud. It's large and it's hairy, it's fat, it's not a pointy bud, so that may bear fruit next year. And on a short length like that, I'm certainly not gonna cut it back to there. You can leave these if they're six, maybe even up to eight inches long, terminated in a fruit bud, then it's perfectly okay to leave them. Otherwise we'd be cutting back here or there. Right, that is all for this video. I'm not gonna prune my other apple trees yet. If you look at the tips of the shoots, you can see whether they are still actively growing or not. And if you prune a little bit too early, then you'll get lots of secondary growth before the winter and, and that's not ideal. So I, I want to leave the apples for a little bit longer. This fella here, it of course 
finished its cycle a little bit earlier because of presumably coming from a slightly different climate so anyway that is all for this video thanks ever so much for watching and bye for now